I'm Katrina and this is Sew and Tear and today I want to talk to you guys about this plant right here. Looks like a dead looking plant but this plant you can see is dead all the way to the bottom and all the way up here. This plant has died back. It is called narrow leaf milkweed and it is a host plant for the monarch butterfly. And you can see there's several plants here of it. And it is important to the butterfly because that is what they lay their eggs on. Once they lay their eggs, the caterpillars eat this and they grow up on this plant only. It could be other milkweeds, but it's all milkweed that they grow up on. Um, several then generations then fly northward away from the coast and each generation lays their eggs on this plant they grow up on the plant the caterpillars hatch to grow up on the plant and then continue on north so there's three to four generations that go north and then one generation only one flies all the way from the northern point all the way down to either the coast of california which is in our case or if they're on the eastern side of the rocky mountains they fly all the way to mexico so there's two different populations of monarchs in the United States, and that's where they overwinter. So it's important at this point, we know these are the native ones, and the native ones, this is what they're supposed to do. This is what they're supposed to look like. In the winter, they die back, and there's no leaves all the way at the ground. This is a different plant right here that's growing. And what the issue is, is when people plant the non-native milkweeds, which still works as a host plant for the butterfly, but they plant them and then they live through the winter. And what that does is it doesn't give the plant a chance to get rid of any um, bacteria, any parasites, anything that the, the butterflies have picked up and moved from place to place is now still on that flower. And in the natural cycle, what happens is that all dies because the plant dies. So everything dies back, including all the diseases and the bacteria and the parasites and all that, and it has to start over again. So for a healthier um, butterfly population, we need people to cut back their non-native um, milkweed in order to mimic what this native milkweed is doing. Here's a picture of a bee on the flower when it is um, flowering and alive looking. It's a good plant for pollinators. It has a nice flat landing pad for them to land on. And also here is a some picture of some aphids that the aphids are uh, particular to this kind of milkweed. Um, it provides food for all sorts of stuff. This is one of the many overwintering spots along the California coast. This particular grove of eucalyptus trees provides winter habitat for the monarch butterfly. Other groves may include different species of trees like Monterey pine or, um, or other species, but they come here to overwinter and they usually don't move around much. Our weather is changing and so this area used to have humongous clumps of, of these butterflies. And you look up and you see just tons and tons of butterflies. And now because the weather has changed, um, you're not seeing as many. You're seeing these small clumps and it's colder, or I mean, it's warmer out during the day. So you'll see them flitting around during the day instead of just kind of hanging out most of the day in, in those clumps. And so this is a species that is in a lot of trouble right now. They don't have as much protection as they should. And it's kind of hard to protect because, as I said earlier, they have several generations going northward and then somehow the furthest north generation comes home right i mean they come to the same area every year but it's not the same individuals every year which makes for an interesting topic of discussion of how they how they get there but 
not talking about that right now. I just wanted people to be aware that you can be ambassadors to the wildlife in your own garden and things like milkweed, they bring in pollinators of all sorts. And you saw the picture of the bee on the flower and they're pretty and yeah, they die back. But if you have the non-native kind, it is important to cut those back, uh, just to protect these butterflies. And when you cut them back, they're going to grow back. So both of the, both the native and the non-native kinds grow back from the roots. So you don't have to be concerned that you're going to kill it. Um, you're not, as long as you're cutting it back in winter. So I thank you guys for listening to this and to try and be ambassadors to wildlife in your own yard, in your own way, and try and find a way to help out. It's always a great idea to draw in pollinators. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.